welcome back to Money Week. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new here and joining me for the first time. So today's video is going to be more about the budgeting side of things, how I budget, how to save. I recently made a bit of an investment. If you're a fan of my weekly vlogs and follow me on Instagram, you may have seen the little uh, thing that is the YSL Lulu bag, which was a big chunk of money, I'm not going to lie, and I did save for it, I was saving over a period of time for it, so that when my birthday came around, which is the 4th of January, myself and Lydia took a trip down to London with a brand, and whilst we were there, we both made our designer purchases that we've both been saving up for. I have my little notes that I'm going to keep referring to, because I don't want to miss anything out. And the first thing that I'm going to start with is my budget planner. I picked this one up from Wilco's. It starts from January and goes all the way throughout to December. But you can pick one up from, I've seen them in HomeSense and TK Maxx before, at Home Bargains, WH Smith, any kind of stationary place. You can even just create your own version in just like a standard notebook. But I find this really helpful to just realise what you're spending more than anything. But also for me, because I'm self-employed, to do my tax returns and know all of my expenses so throughout the entire year I'll have every single item detailed on here. Budget planner is my tip number one and then you can if you want to total it up at the end of the week or at the end of the month and I know when I was at university I can't believe I did this but I budgeted myself £45 a week. £45 a week and that was everything nights out food clothes everything I wasn't strict with it in that that was my like regular week but if I was doing something special or making an investment purchase or something like that then it would obviously jump up quite a bit but generally speaking £45 a week was my expense throughout uni I never went into my overdraft and I know a lot of students do, it's quite common, a lot of people, not students, just anyone, go into their overdraft, but I've always been quite good with my money. I like it, I'm a saver, I really struggled spending that amount of money on a designer bag, but I told myself that I'd, you know, like, worked for it, I'd been saving for it, so I allowed myself <laughs> to spend on it. The practical side of me was like, because my laptop was more, but I didn't think twice about spending that because I knew I needed it and like it was good for editing and I mean I'm on my laptop a massive portion of the day every single day. I use it all the time so practicality wise I need it. Whereas the bag is very much a luxury item and if you can afford something twice then you can afford it like generally speaking. Now it does have a really useful section here where it shows a breakdown of your monthly income after tax grants, loans and other money due dates and amounts but for me and being self-employed I don't have like a regular set wage coming in every month so it's quite hard for me to like detail that but also there is a really useful glossary here for all the different terms that you may need and then we get into monthly income and expenditure of which like I said you can detail your fixed income and your fixed spending your variable income and your variable spending but I just went straight to January's budget and I basically just detail everything here with an amount next to it that has everything it has my subscriptions my gym food fuel my car that I pay for every month my shopping <laughs> Habits. It was only £2.50 from Wilco's. What a bargain. Secondly, you can review your memberships. So if you have any memberships that you don't use anymore, so whether that be beauty boxes, magazine subscriptions, your gym membership, perhaps you could start doing workouts from home. Kind of touching on the if you can afford something twice, you can afford it. It's just live within your means. Don't compare yourself to any other people, which can be really hard to do, especially like if you are maybe self employed. For instance, if I look at someone who has a similar following to me and therefore I assume they have a similar income to me, you don't know what money they're getting from elsewhere. You can't compare yourself to others and what they can afford. Just live within your means. 
Something that you can do if you think you're maybe spending too much money on luxuries like clothing or beauty items. One method that I actually learned from It's Judy's Life. I don't know if any of you guys watch her on YouTube. She's like a family vlogger based in the States. She tends to follow the method of when you buy something new, you replace it with something old. If I don't own that item already and it will add something to my wardrobe, then fine. But if I already have a similar item but I really want it, you can buy it, but you have to throw out the old. And so if you condo method here, Marie Kondo, if that old item still means something to you and you can't get rid of it, then do you really need the new one? That's kind of a method you can stick by. Me, personally, it's a little bit different because I do work in the fashion industry as my job. I like to keep current. I like to show you guys what's new in, so I do do a lot of shopping, but you should see the amount I donate. I also do have Depop, so I sell the odd item here and there because otherwise, if it all gets on top of you and there's too much in your wardrobe, then you're just gonna stick with what you know and pick out the items that you wear anyway. By the way, speaking of items that you wear, how cute is this little chase me love the font this is from i saw it first if you didn't see i worked with them recently on a full youtube haul and ran a giveaway with them as well so if you want to check that out i will leave a little card or a link in the description Moving on to beauty in terms of treatments. Not everyone spends any money on beauty treatments, but they are definitely a luxury. And if it's something that is really important for you, a bit of self-love, something that you enjoy doing, then fine. But if it's something that you're like just going to for the sake of it, then maybe you should rethink your beauty treatments in terms of like nails, hair, maybe you don't need to go as often as you were going before. Waxing is another one. I personally switched out going to get a wax with an epilator. So ever since I've had my epilator, very rarely will I go to get a wax. The only time that I'll do that is maybe if I'm going on holiday and I'm booked in for a few treatments anyway, then waxing is easier. I prefer it, but I save a lot of money by Epilating. Bit TMI for some of you. I don't know, but that is what I do. A lot of you guys, when I suggested doing this money week, a lot of you were asking for some kind of video of like budget gift ideas. Now, the main thing that I would recommend for that is simply switch out expensive gifts for more sentimental ones. Like little DIY projects, you can find so much inspiration on Pinterest. I know once last year I wanted to like get something for Tom and I did a little out of the blue present which I wanted to do but it was just a blue box pretty much filled with all blue things and it was just just a little something out of the blue. It's relative to each individual and how much you can afford obviously but I would love to get something sentimental. It's like when we work with brands. If, if a brand sends us a PR package and it's got my name printed on it, it can be so much lower in value to the next item that I receive in a PR package but because it's been personalized I just love that and I think it's thoughtful kind of relating to my food haul that I did previously this week my budget food haul one thing that I did want to say is when you are doing your food shopping go with a list of things that you need and stick to that list and also don't go when you're hungry one thing that I am a big fan of in terms of saving money is I much prefer a night in to a night out. And even if that's by yourself, maybe having a little pamper night, or if you are wanting to socialize and do something with friends, why not invite them over rather than going out? Not every time, obviously it's nice to like treat yourself to a night out once in a while and if you're getting dressed up, maybe go out for a drink. It's quite nice maybe midweek to just invite your girls over, maybe get a takeaway if you're really feeling like indulging or a bottle of wine or whatever and just chill out at home and you can save a lot of money by doing that in taxi fares, drinks, food out. So uh, yeah, why not do a gals night in as opposed to a gals night out? And plus, who doesn't enjoy a night in with PJs? I'm a sucker for that. I am not a fan of going out anymore. Rarely do I go out. I would much rather a night in, but that's just me. Another thing that you guys were asking is traveling on a budget. And I would recommend either doing last minute bookings. So if you're more flexible, someone like me and Tom, for instance, we are very flexible with holidays because we're both self-employed we don't have to book time off work necessarily so we like to do a lot of like last minute trips but equally last year no year before last yeah year before last 
we went to Barbados and we booked that well in advance and that is the main way that you can save a lot of money for instance our flights to Barbados were expensive anyway I'm not gonna lie they're the same price as the bag they were 1300 but economy was only a couple of hundred pounds cheaper and then by the time that it came closer to the day of when we were leaving maybe a couple of months before a few months before they tripled slash quadrupled in price so we got a brilliant experience of traveling first class which i've never done before and we pretty much got it at more or less the same price as economy so that is one thing that i would recommend well in advance or last minute Another tip relating to food is maybe eat less meat. For me, when I'm doing a food shop, if I'm not getting any meat, I'm like, God, is that, is that all I've spent? But then as soon as I add meat to the basket or to the cart, it like jumps up. Maybe look towards doing some more vegetarian or vegan options throughout the week. Try doing it and see if you save any money. Another thing that I wanted to mention is carpooling. So if you are in like an office based job, for instance, you can maybe share a lift to work with employees. That's what I used to do when I worked at Manchester United for a few seasons. We used to carpool because a lot of us, a lot of students worked there. So we used to always just share and maybe chip in a little couple of quid here and there for petrol money. It just helped save a lot on if I were to have a car myself or if I was spending on taxis. TV. Now we don't have Sky and I haven't had Sky since I lived at home pretty much and now my parents don't have it either because everyone's watching Netflix or Amazon Prime now or just Freeview which you get like built in standard TVs nowadays. I don't know the exact cost because I haven't had it in a long time but maybe just rethink and are you using all the sports channels, are you using all the movie channels, do you need them all or could you maybe just opt for Netflix. The last thing that I wanted to touch upon was something that I've ventured into more since starting YouTube beforehand. I didn't really ever do it but I've been thrifting a lot more. So as you guys know if you are already subscribed to my channel I do quite a lot of thrift hauls and more than anything it's to like open your eyes and to show you guys what you could find and also teach you that like upcycling is always a really good method A for the environment and B for your bank balance. Not always, don't get me wrong, sometimes charity shops can get a little pricey for what they are, like they're like same as Primark prices so I do think sometimes no wonder people opt for Primark or something over a charity shop but maybe if you're looking for maybe more higher priced items or books or furniture, anything like that, then definitely start thrifting. Even just open your eyes to it. Even if it's not going into charity shops, maybe you could look online, maybe eBay, something like that, Depop, where you can maybe save a lot of money and get the item you're after but at a fraction of the price just because it's been pre-owned. And more often than not, the condition is always noted. So if it's really worn and you're not keen on it, then fine. But if someone's got it as a gift or had it for maybe a couple of months, not liked it, you could end up getting yourself a real bargain. If you want to, then be sure to check out my thrifting hauls. I have a playlist on my channel so you can check them out. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you picked up some saving and budgeting tips and of course any others that you have that I've not mentioned pop them in the comments below I would love to know as I'm sure everyone else watching would love to know as well so just leave them in the comments don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you again tomorrow bye guys